I won't tempt fate. Um, I guess if we could just uh, bring up the agenda on all of our screens, we could just go through this together. Um, do we have anyone who is uh, new here this week that would like to introduce themselves? Well, I'm trying to figure out my screen sharing problems. Nope. Okay, so nothing on the agenda and notes, but we do have a couple of things in the open floor. Is Andre here? Or someone from DDesk? Andre, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Sorry, was on mute. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, looks like you've got a, a release date you'd like to talk about. Uh, uh, we are releasing the next days the D desk, and uh, it's completely based on Kubevert. Uh, we create infrastructure for a hundred thousand concurrent users. We're gonna have ten clusters with 1,250 nodes each. Cool. Wow. Uh, that's big. This is small. It's 10% of our current user base. <laughs> Do you have a, um, like a, a link that you'd like to include here for us to be able to? Yeah, let check me it out? on. The... Also, refresh not, my memory. Not publish it yet. You cannot sign today, but in the next days we're gonna uh, we're gonna release it. Okay. But <laughs> I keep you you posted on 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 the the community meetings when, but it's before next Wednesday gonna be released, okay? Okay. Um, did you end up, I think we talked about this in a previous community meeting, um, did you end up creating a PR to add DDesk to a list of Kubert adopters? Uh, was cutting can we repeat? Um, have do you have an open PR about adding DDesk to the Qubit adopters? Uh, okay. Not right now. <laughs> it can be very helpful. <laughs> okay, let me drop it in the chat. Oh, Daniel's already beat me to it. And adopters. Oh, here I I didn't put that. Okay, okay. Okay. Let me ask my developers to do it. Well, hopefully everything goes well for you. Um, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, was there anything else you'd like to add to that or should we move on to the next point? Uh, yeah, uh, I can show the, the, the solution work next Wednesday live. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Piotr, you'd like to talk about Qvert ARM support. So. Hi, I'm Peter from NVIDIA. Uh, maybe not talk, I, I wanted to ask uh, what's the current status. I saw the issue that it's experimental right now, but uh, we just wanted to know if there are some plans on uh, like fully supported ARM, maybe you need some help, etc. Uh, maybe someone on the call can give me some answers regarding that. Yeah, I can I can probably chime in, although I am just a supporter of the initiative. The real uh, implementation is done by Howard Zhang, who is from ARM team. And um, at the, uh, so we have basic ARM support. I think we, you were in a Slack chat, which Ryan added you, I guess, right? And um, so, uh, as I pointed out there, we had for a while, we had a running trial job that would run uh, periodically to test the ARM support. But the thing is that currently the ARM nodes are broken that we use. So there is nothing going on like um, 
uh, having some uh, some some uh, continuous testing. What we're looking for is uh, to have a, a, a real ARM cluster that is integrated into our Prow setup so that we can run regular Prow jobs. Howard has also been working uh, mainly on the uh, on the enablement on that because uh, for that you need a kind provider that works with our CI together. Um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell what we are looking forward to do. The thing is just that uh, we are currently pretty blocked, like because the nodes are not functioning. So that that is in a nutshell the status from my point of view. So um, if you would uh, need more information, I would just uh, uh, beg you to ping Howard Zhang on uh, Kubernetes chat uh, Slack. I think I think he might uh, give you a bigger example. And yeah, but also the images. Uh, the the issues that we have regarding ARM should also give you something like uh, like an overview of how how everything's working at the moment. Is that for a start enough, or do you need more? Yeah, for for start, it's good. Thanks for pointing out. Okay. And thank, thank you, Pieter, for raising this. Uh, it's something we're aware of, and the more interest we have from the community, it just helps us drive our priorities. Great. Um, all right. Well, if no one else has anything to add, before we move to uh, the pull requests, uh, someone's added this. Um, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Um, who would like to talk about uh, pull request and the user guide 590? So, Alexander. Um, so, this is actually an update to the uh, VM export. Um, we've added a uh, virt CTL integration. Um, and, and this just updates the documentation with examples and use cases, et cetera. Um, it, it just needs somebody to look at it and approve it. Right. Is there anyone on this call that can um, uh, pick that up? I can take a look, um, although I have never experimented with that, but yeah, at least from, from a, I'm, and I'm not a native speaker, uh, I might uh, transfer that to, to someone else who is a native speaker then, but for a first look, I, I'm going to, going to look at it. Yeah, so, so it was written by somebody who has Spanish as the first language. I reviewed it where I have Dutch as my first language, so... Uh, a native speaker would be nice. I, I'm, I'm happy to take a look. I wouldn't be able to do it today, um, but I'm happy to take a look at that. Uh, I am theoretically a native speaker, um, and I can certainly, yeah, provide. Uh, I think it's in pretty good system. shape, so you know, it shouldn't be too much stuff in there. So. Okay, I don't think I'm either a reviewer or an approver of the user guide. Um, but yeah, happy to, I think happy to I think I, I I can approve it. Um, I just didn't want to approve it, you know, without a an actual native speaker actually taking a look at it. That's all. Gotcha. All right. Cool. All right. Well, I'll uh, yeah, Daniel and I will take a look at that. Thanks for raising it. Is that that? Um, there are two things for the mailing list that I wanted to highlight. Actually, uh, three. I didn't add the third one in case Brian was going to join. Um, and talk about it. Um, the first is, uh, this is slightly awkward without sharing a screen. Um, uh, it is Daniel's email. Actually, Daniel's here. Do you want to give a quick five second too long didn't read? Um, I just thought I'd put these here for awareness for the community in case you hadn't seen them. Um, yeah, sure. So um, what we are normally doing is we are uh, taking regular uh, meetings where we are looking at uh, the test status of, of uh, everything that's going on inside uh, the Cupid Cupid repository. We have a report that we'll look at, uh, which is called the Flake Finder. 
uh, and which uh, pretty much um, uh, sums up every test failure that has been uh, uh, um, that, that has been raised in any uh, of the merged PRs in a in a uh, interval. So when those tests uh, tend to tend to be um, a little bit more flaky than uh, than usual, we normally raise stuff to the people, and um, that that was the case last Thursday, where we just uh, raised a couple of issues that we had. Um, on uh, flaky tests, and we just um, mitigated those in uh, having a quick brainstorming on Friday and uh, quarantining the most flaky tests. So, the, because you you need to understand why we're doing that, the the reason for why we're looking at those tests is that everyone who is um, contributing to the Qbert is of course hit by that because then you might. Um, experience flaky tests inside your PR um, and tests that you might not even have touched. And they make, for example, your PR not getting merged because they fail and you don't know why. And that's a thing that we are trying to mitigate by looking at those and trying to um, trying to forward those flaky tests to the people that can take care of that and, and uh, to just uh, uh, correct them and to keep the CI in overall shape um, as good as possible. So that's in a nutshell what I was trying to tell with that email, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you very much. Oh. Sorry that I've done an oh, awful copy paste. Um, yeah, thanks for that. And thanks for all the, the work that um, the four of you do in that area. Um, the next one from the list, I just want to raise awareness for it, was there was a latest tag removed from the Vice Plugin Network Bridge. Um, and I think the last line of that is pertinent. If you were using this image, then please speak up in order to get the tag restored. Um, so you can read that in your own leisure, but that's the, the core of it. The third one, and I'll just put the link in here. It's something we've been, it's been on the mailing list. It's been talked about here, I think the last couple of weeks, the um, change of the release schedule. Um, this is just a bit, this is more of a, um, you know, um, a few points about how things are gonna change and things to think about as we, as we make this shift going forward. Um, so yeah, um, please read that. Uh, please weigh in if you have any thoughts on that subject. Oh, I also have one out there, which I sent out yesterday about the release notes. Um, and yeah, if you have any thoughts about how we can change the release notes, then that is also good in a place you can weigh up on. All right. We have a bunch of bugs, and this is going to be a little more awkward without the whole share screen thing. Um, so the first one, 8502. Um, I think the first three are all by the same person. So there's a good chance that there's um, there a, a new user, potentially. Uh, they are having issues with um, expanding virtual machine directories in Ubuntu. Um, the main comment is they've got a, a bunch of screenshots. As stated above, I create a data volume of PVC storage of 60 gig, but when I log into the instance, the directory is only 4.8 gig. How do I expand it? How do I expand slash to 60 gig? Thank you for your guidance. Um, yeah, uh, I think the easiest way to do this is if um, someone is able to um, leave a comment, whether pointing to the user guide or leaving a helpful answer, then um, please raise your hand or say I or something. And then we can move on to the next one. You're not able to help out here. Yeah, I, I can do that. It, Thank you very much. You just need to update the partition to use the actual disk. So the disk is the right size. It's just that the partition is smaller. So oh, okay. I, I suspect all three of them are basically the same thing. So. Oh, okay, okay. So... We, don't, we don't automatically update the partitions because we don't know which partition you want to expand. That's basically the issue. So. Oh, okay. Um, is is this something other users might um, encounter as well? Or is like is this something that we should add something to the user guide? 
it, it might be helpful to add that to the user guide. Actually, it might be a, a good thing to, maybe for the Concept Fest and the KubeCon, some documentation. Okay. Yep. All right. I might reach out to you after this meeting then um, about raising an issue so we can raise something um, complete and concise potentially for uh, ahead of Hacktober Fest. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to presume that those three are looked after by Alexander because he says they're related. Uh, moving down to how to set clock offset to local time, uh, 8507. Um, how to set the clock offset to local time in libvirt domain XML. I've tried several composition of spec.domain.clock, but it didn't work. Um, is anyone able to weigh in and help this person out? Uh, this, this sounds a little bit strange. I'd say he's talking about local time and libvirt domain XML. And so what I'm missing here, first of all, is some specification of a virtual machine, uh, like in a virtual machine YAML. And so um, well, he seems to want to fiddle around with the libvirt domain XML. And I, to be honest, I, I find that a little bit odd, but yeah. Um, Maybe I'm, I'm not the right person to look at this. <laughs> Fair enough. I va vaguely remember last year encountering an issue with, um, uh, what was it? Something similar to this where my, my virtual machines were not coming up the time that they said they would and it had no relation to the, um, the time of my local machine either. It was just a, a random, um, but I can't really help out because I don't remember how I solved that particular problem. I think it was a very- To be honest, nice... and, and so I think, I think what he means, he doesn't mean the libvirt domain XML, I guess. I guess he's actually talking about the, the uh, vert or, or the, the virtual machine specification that he's trying to. And maybe you could, uh, we, we could probably just, um, I'm just adding a comment here. Um, triage needs more information. Um, and asking for the uh, um, for the posting of you of the of the avert uh, uh, virtual machine XML specification so that we can take a, a better look at that, I guess. Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next one, um, eight five two zero. No connection on Windows virtual machine and associated vert launcher pod. Um, this is a person that's following a, what I believe is the mini cube. Ah, um, one of our blogs from 2020, Cube installing Microsoft Windows from an ISO um, on a mini cube setup. And after setting it up and connecting it with VNC, I noticed that though it doesn't have an internet connection. When I go to the associated VertLogipods compute container, I can't curl either. Um, yeah, is anyone able to help out with this person? They're using a uh, 2012 i2 Windows VM spec. Does it speak to anyone? I would, in general, just say that there might be some configuration issue with his pod networking somehow, or in the in the networking of the VM. But I can say, without any virtual machine specification, maybe he should also just. Um, I'm just going to to uh, add the same comment that I've added to the other one, um, maybe to this one also. Thanks, mate. Um, 
slide aside, Andre, were you you would you've been having a lot of experience deploying Windows machines on Qbert? Are you still on the call? I am. Sorry. <laughs> Um, is this something that you've, uh, you've, you've come across and have any experience with and can weigh in on? Uh, I, I was solving a problem with my son. I don't hear the question. Sorry for that. All right. It's in the, um, the bug scrub. It is number 8520. Um, they're having, um, uh, they're setting up a Windows virtual machine on Kubert and they're having problems with, uh, it doesn't seem to have any, um, Connection to the internet and cannot be curled. Uh, eight five two zero eight five twenty. Here, let me read it just one second. You're right. I'll uh, while you do that, I'll, I will just move on so we get to the last bug. Eight five eight five two four. CTL memory dump. Oh, I'm sorry. There's lots of comments on this one. Well, we can ignore that one. I might have pasted the wrong one. Uh -huh. The only thing I, I, I see so far, and we have experienced uh, some, some issues there, uh, is that because uh, on Windows 11 and now Windows Server 2022, there are some system requirements that need to be achieved uh, to make everything happen. Uh, and sometimes if I use exactly eight gigs, uh, it uh, reports that is not actually eight gigs <laughs> for the windows. And uh, the way that I work around was to change it uh let me show you here uh let me grab my my yaml file uh While Andre does that, I'm just going to add something really quickly to the um, agenda notes, and that is that the um, calls for proposals oh, let's see if you bring it. Uh, for KubeCon EU 2023, um, I realize we haven't quite hit KubeCon North America 2022 yet, but the CFPs are open for next year in Europe. It is in Amsterdam from the 17th to the 21st of April. Um, so if you have any ideas uh, for presenting there. Um, yeah, let me give you just one link that explains the issue. All righty. Um, and how to solve it. <laughs> it's, you need to edit the HAG, uh, registry edit. And the way we find out is to, uh, during the installation, of the, the Windows is itself, uh, we create and modified ISO file that uh, change the registry in a proper way. <laughs> it's not so simple. Uh, we are preparing some documentation uh, to, to be uploaded on, on, on it. But seeing uh, this is completely automated in our solution for you know. We have used uh, this site here. Uh, 
to be able to generate uh, a ISO file with the proper uh, modifications. Uh, let me grab one, one thing here that can help you guys. Uh, Uh, All right, well, you do that. I'll, I'll continue on the um, conference thing. Um, yep, so please do. Also, FOSDEM is happening. Um, the website is now up and it points to the right year this time. Um, uh, to my knowledge, they do not have the CFP open, um, but I'll be sure to let you know when it is. And yeah, if you do have any ideas or you do have a, a half written presentation and you'd like some um, second thoughts or feedback or anything, um, please let me know. Um, uh, I've got various resources to help you out. Or if you just want to practice your talk or just like pitch or, or whatever. Um, yeah, these are, these are the registry keys I will change. <laughs> okay. These need to be done. The, the workaround for now is to uh do it uh, for you don't have problems increase from eight gigs to 16 gigs for instance and do this register key and then roll back to eight gigs or four gigs uh, with this registry key the the, the 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 solution works with even four gigs of ram okay is that only windows 11 or is that will that is also is Windows 11 and Windows Server 2022. What about uh, Windows 2012 R2? Uh, on 2012, we not even touch that anymore. <laughs> okay. Sorry right. for that. <laughs> All right. Use this 2016 because lack of support from Microsoft. Um, and I just see that um, Peter's also put in chat that for the clock and local time, we don't support it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just run through the code, and it seems the only two options that we support is YouTube and time zone. I have already responded on the session. Oh, nice one. Thank you very much. All right. I think that brings us to. Yeah, if anyone has anything to add at the last minute, please speak up now. Well, I I, uh, I sincerely apologize. I, I was the one who actually had volunteered to lead this for CAT, and I actually ended up having technical difficulties this morning. So I, again, I sincerely apologize for my, my lack of presence this morning. Uh, that's all right. The um, I was able to pick up. I wasn't able to share screen, so it was a, a little bit of a, a weird one this week. Um, but if you'd like to make up for it, Larry, next week, you can do it uh, next week. Well, I would, I would happily do it next week to, to redeem myself. <laughs> I, I do apologize again. I, I had an issue with, with Zoom. It updated and it wouldn't, like, I didn't know that it had updated on my end. I'm on Linux. And whenever the clients get out of sync, you can't connect to things. And so I was trying all sorts of stuff and it would start getting in and then it'd jump off. And so in any case, I would, I would happily lead it next week to, uh, to redeem myself. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we can reach out to Kat, and I, I don't think it's necessary, but if, if you'd like to lead it, then um, 100%, I don't think anyone will argue with that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll reach out to her and uh, offer my apologies to her as well. But uh, thank you for picking it up, Andrew. Thank you. And if no one has anything to add, 
I'll say thank you very much. Have a nice day and we'll see you next week. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. See you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. See you. Bye.